everybody, it's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. This is season six, episode five, Dogged Out. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then hit that notification bell so you will know whenever I'm up. Upload new content. <laughs> Had to slow that Mustang down a little bit. Um, this episode was okay. It wasn't too much going on. A lot of it got on my dog on nerves. But um, yeah, y'all. Let's just get right on up to the review. I hope y'all are ready for it, cause I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. <laughs> y'all, so this episode started off once again where it left off. So Paris and Zell's getting into it with Britney B at her bowling event that she had, right? So you remember she said something about the little Uber thing to Paris. Paris didn't catch that T at first, but then when she said it again, because she told Zell's, no offense, I invited you, but I invite your homegirl. So then she was like, you can get in the Uber and Uber your ass on up out of here. That's when Paris caught that shade that she was throwing out there, right? So they get into it. Paris and Zell's just start acting ignorant. They going running down a bowling alley, bowling, running from security. Paris ass over here, Euro stepping away from the damn security guard. They was just sitting there acting stupid. In my opinion, I ain't gonna lie. It was funny as hell, but I was laughing at them. I wasn't laughing with them because they make themselves look real stupid. That's supposed to be, that was supposed to be like a mixer, an industry mixer, or something like that, where it connects, where you can meet these people that know these people that get you on the deck because you want to go there. And you up in there acting a doggone fool. If Britney really did not like them being there, she could have went to security discreetly like she had already done and had them very politely escort their ass up out of there. But she wanted to make a scene. But then again, Zell's and Paris, they like the dynamic duo now. Freaking frack, this and that. Thing one and thing two. So they they everywhere to doggone together. Y'all, so that episode, I mean, that part right there kind of got on my nerves a little bit. Like I said, just I felt like they were embarrassing themselves and they didn't have to do all of that. They didn't have to do all of that. But child, yeah, they went on and broke up that little girl party there. Which she said, I really don't care. I ain't gonna lie because I don't too much care for Britney B, my dog on self anyway, but you'll find out in a minute, child. <laughs> Y'all, so Lyrica has decided she gonna go on tour with A1, right? So she on her way, you know, to drop the baby off at the babysitter. She's reflecting on her time with A1, how much she loves him, how she's not, you know, she doesn't want her son Ocean to grow up in two separate households because she knows what it's like to not have her father you the you, wada, wada, wada. This is what I want to say, y'all. Did y'all see Lyrica G damn wig? Oh, girl, you didn't see it? Baby. Now, I couldn't find no picture on the net, right? So I just had to take a real quick picture on my phone. Girl. Is this what we doing? Is this what we doing now? What in the beat it? What in the who's bad? What in the black and white is going on, Chiana? Girl! <gasps> Child, it like a throw on wig. That like a wig that you put on when you finna go pick the kids up from school real quick. That look like a wig that you put on when you gotta run down to HEB and get some milk and some um, eggs for the cornbread mix real quick. That look like a wig that you put on when you going out and you finna go find his ass. That's not no wig that she wear on TV that people see. That, that have a girl, girl. But she drop Ocean off with her mama. They both get out, cause A1 is with her. A1 get out like she finna hug Big Lyric G Jigger. They're like, nah, no, nah. her and her wig wasn't having it. Her and Mr. Jackson was not having it. They didn't want no parts of A1 and his <laughs> clothing he had on. Somebody still, somebody out there, one of my nieces and nephews, y'all supposed to let me know what the hell this <laughs> clothing line is that A1 got on. Where they do that at? Y'all. So Ray J and Princess's dog was dog nap, right? His parents were dog sitting her daddy asked her, did somebody left the damn door open? The dog ran outside. They seen on security camera, some dude came up and snatched up Bugatti. Princess is upset. She's all in a rage. She's crying up to five in the morning, calling the vets and the kennels and the everybody, anybody, everybody. 
She's upset. Now, I get it. Before anybody come to my comments, I get it. Most people's animals are their kids. I get it. Trust me, I do. This is my beef, though. What the hell I got to do with Love & Hip Hop Hollywood? What is I'm watching? This is this... What is I'm watching? Girl! So she upset about that. She's upset because she feel like Ray J ain't doing nothing about it. Mind you, they got five other damn dogs. So they like you. <laughs> you got one less mouth to feed. That was wrong. That was wrong. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Please, Peter, ASPCA, Dog Rides of America. Please don't come after me. But I'm just saying, though. Like, girl. Girl. Chance to later on, they at the doggone park. Ray J and he got a whole posse together, right? They finna put out some flyers giving $20,000 of a reward to who found Bugatti. Baby, I found them. If I, if I, 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 can, I can make him found. Trust me. I can find Bugatti for 20 racks. But I'm just saying though. So he got a whole posse of people. They out there in the park, right? Now, she once again wants to blame. Now, you know she don't like Miss Sonya Norwood anyway. She don't like Ray J Mama. And Ray J Mama don't really like her no damn way. She wouldn't mess with her if it wasn't for the baby in the first damn place. I hate to say it, but that's what it is, what it is. Hey, I love Princess. She from Austin, Texas. That's my girl. Hey, girl, hey. But what I'm saying is, she's still blaming his mama for the dog being missing. She's like, well, it's your mom's fault. They left the door open. If they wouldn't have left the door open, Bugatti wouldn't have got out because as soon as he ran across the street, he was gone and they took my baby. Lord. She hurt. She distraught. But then, Mr. Norwood, Big Ray J, he said, no, nah, man, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to take full responsibility for that. That was my fault. My bad. I accidentally left the door open. It was a whole bunch of crap going on. I didn't mean to do it. This heifer gonna say, well, I think this all should be a lesson for all of us. Hell, where? Girl, girl. No, girl, this is where it gets better. So she got a, they got a psychic, y'all. This is black people. This is what we do when we get money. This is what we do when we get some reparations, 40 acres in a mule. You go out and you buy a goddamn doggy psychic, a doggy whisperer. So y'all out there in the park like the rescue rangers looking for this damn dog and you got the psychic. Now, people what the psychic say. Psychic gonna say, I see they're in a gray house, in a garage, in a black cage. The woman is scared, but the man is evil. Girl, stop. 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 Y'all not about to play with me with this mess. You're not finna do it. You're not finna do it. Now, mind you, everybody out there at the little search party, aside from uh Sonya, Mama Ray J. Mama Ray J said, child, I'm not finna mess up my good wig out there in, in, in the uh park, in a dog park, looking for a dog that ain't mine. I don't blame you, Miss Sonya. I'm not finna be out there doing that mess no goddamn way. Uh-uh. No, it's not finna happen. Y'all, so the psyche gonna say that the dog ain't there. The dog is in Malibu. And the dude don't want twenty thousand. He want fifty thousand. Now, if you ask me, she's damn sure specific. How you know he want fifty thousand? How you know he don't want forty five twenty one, a thirty two eighty seven, a eight hundred eleven and one? How you know specifically he want fifty thousand? How you know specific? Typically, it's a gray house and a black cage and the woman this and the man that. Because you know what I'm saying? Some of these other sites, they, they not that precise. Are you the dog napper? You know a whole lot. You know too much. They need to be checking for her ass. Y'all, so we get Mickey Monday and Slick Woods. They are doing some old bike riding on some little couples. They cute or whatever down with the swirl. I like it. It's cute. So they was just talking about their relationship, how they both had it hard coming up. Slick was saying she was comfortable struggling because that's what she was used to. Then all of a sudden she get all this money, 13 bands to walk this runway, walk that runway. Now mind you, she's an international model. She ain't no middle of the mall ass model. She do this for forever, for, for real, for real on life, okay? So 
He was saying as well that they kind of grew up in the same neighborhoods. Their mothers actually grew up around each other. So they both seen the struggle. I didn't know Slick was only 22. And then her mother was incarcerated for 20 years. I don't I, She out now because I see her with pictures of her. But damn, girl, did she get locked up like right when you was born or something? Damn, that's got to be hard. He tells her he has a showcase coming up. And he wants her to be right there front row, front and center when he on the stage. Now, mind you, he was just meeting with that bobblehead girl, Trisha, at dinner not too long ago. Now, he ain't bring that up when he was talking with Slick, but he was saying how much he loved her. He was feeling her, whoop de whoop yada, yada, yada. Child, you're going to have to watch this fool right here. Watch his ass. Y'all, so we got K. Michelle doing his photo shoot in a bathtub with, with a bunch of bubbles, but she said she's getting into home goods, pots and plants. I don't I don't get what that has to do with the bathtub. Unless she's selling bathtubs or she's selling bubbles or something. I don't know. But she's doing a photo shoot. She always doing a photo shoot. Always doing a photo shoot. Always. But anyways, Brittany B. Brittany B bring her ass in here. Oh, I forgot to tell y'all the funniest thing. Goddamn Zells call her ass Barty B. Baby, when I heard that, I about had 5,100 kids. That is funny as hell. Fun T. But anyways, she come in on some old petty mess, telling Kay, now Kay Michelle didn't want to hear no crap at first. She told her like, girl, all right, girl, go ahead, come on in, let me know what you got to know. She come in there on that old petty mess, telling her about how Zell's and Paris busted up into her event and how she had to get all on Paris, how she was calling her out about the Uber this, that, and the other. Now Kay Michelle made a valid point. Why are you up in the mix? That don't have nothing to do with you. I don't need you fighting my battles. That's exactly how I feel. This girl, Brittany B, is always in the mix of something. Always in the mix of something. And then she starts going in about how April Jones can't sing. How if anybody would have asked her if April could sing, she would say she don't know because she sings too low. She can't hear her. Then she starts going in on Lyrica. Now, that's because she mentioned that she's doing that showcase and Kay Michelle actually brought up Lyrica and said that you know Lyrica is going to be performing. Britney B starts going in. She's a fake friend. She's fake this. She's fake that. Bloop de doop de doop. Now, Kay is like, her and I squash the beef. What you need to do is just squash it as well. Get on out there. We all trying to be out here and do something and do something. Like, girl, stop with it. But she's steady with this. She's a fake friend. She's telling people I'm a fake person. So believe me, when I see her, I'm going to ask her about it. Kay's just like, girl. All right, girl. Okay. So Paris and Zells go over to April's house, right? They're over to have some cocktails, little girl talk, whoop de whoop appetizers and all that. April gets to talking about how she's unsure about if she wants to go on tour with Moniz. She's not really feeling like it's a good vibe. She don't think it's a good mix. Girl, duh. Like... I don't know why you thought that. I don't know why Monique thought that would be a good idea, but then Monique's conniving like that. She always up to something. So she's just saying that she don't think she's going to go on the tour. She's going to leave that alone with her, right? So next thing you know, they finna go over to the couch, sit down. She tell me need to take shoes off. Zell see some big ass, like Jordans or something, Kevin, Kevin Durant or something over there. He like, dang, what size does Megan wear? Then she tells them that their Fizz is um, shoes. Because Fizz, of course, he goes on tour and he left some things over here. I look out for him. We're best friends. She about wearing his best friend's crap out. Everybody know y'all more than best friends. Girl, just get on my nerves at this damn point. Golly. So then Zell's asked, like, like, are y'all best friends like me in Paris? Or y'all like best friends, best friends? She clearly, she says he has not inserted his penis into my vagina yet. Yet. She said, well, it's not like I don't want it to happen. Yeah, you got, girl, because it's done already happened. Stop it. It's getting on my damn nerves. It's getting on my nerves, okay? All Paris and Zell's really worried about, don't mess up the group, because they done already got their tickets to the Millennium Tour. I can't have no issues going on to where I can't hear bump, 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 and all of that. Like, don't do it. Y'all, so Fizz and Jay Boog backstage getting ready to go on stage, whatever, right? Jay Boog down there doing his push-ups, trying to, Perk his, perk his shit up so it look good when he on stage for all the girls, whatever, right? All us damn near 40 some yos that have already seen your ass. Boy, bye. So, Fizz says he wants to invite April. Jay Boog is like, okay, yes, yeah, so I want to holler at you about that. Like, what, what's, what's, what is this? What is going on? What is we calling this? Once again, here Fizz go with this. That's my best friend crap. That's getting on my nerves. It is really getting on my nerves. 
just Jay Bug said in his uh, green screen, he's like, look here, I got 3.5 mil to make over the next 15 days. I don't want nothing that's the thruple with them going on affecting my money, which I don't blame you for that. Like, what the hell? Next thing you know, April calls, Fizz got to step out to take this call. What you got to step out and take the call for if it ain't no big deal? Y'all best friends. That don't make no doggone sense. Now, before she called, though, uh, Jay Boog asked, like, was everything okay between him and Omarion? Fizz going to say, well, he ain't said nothing to me just yet, so, you know, I figure it's not a big deal. Why he got to say something to you? You banging his ex baby mama or old lady. Why he got to say something to you? Boy, you think just because he ain't said nothing don't mean he ain't got nothing to say? That don't make no sense. Boy. Child, when Fizz walks out, next thing you know, Marcus Houston walk his big head ass up in there. Where the hell he been at? Boy, where you been at? Boy, lay lay about boy. But him and Jay Boog and I guess some other guys, they have a record label called, record label called Vince, uh, no, footage films that they want to get together. And so Jay Boog is a part of that. He wants to bring Immature back and bring Immature on tour. Because, you know, like he said, everybody else has had a reunion tour from Escape to, what, Jagged S to, you know, B2K, all these other ones. Pretty Ricky, all of them. So he's thinking, you know, why not we give back to your fans as well, the immature fans, and we try to do a tour with you all. I think they end up do getting something together. I think I heard something like that on social media called a throwback tour, something like that. I don't know. But Omarion, I mean, not Omarion, Marcus, he said he got to go back and holler at the other two immature because, you know, it was three of them in there. I seen on the next episode, I don't know if that's going to go over too well, but like I said, I think it does because they end up, they, it is some... I don't know if that's just a rumor or what, but I heard it's supposed to be some kind of tour with them and Day 26 and some other one's shy. I don't know. When I find out, I'll let y'all know. If y'all already know, let me know. So it's the night of Jason Lee's event. K. Michelle is backstage. Britney B comes back there. They talk for a minute. Whoop de whoop. Y'all, I'm just not feeling Britney B. Jason Lee ends up coming back there. Britney B, once again, here she go with this old fake and phony petty crap start asking about doggone um lyrica i wouldn't have her on my list and bitch who cares i wouldn't have you on my list and she i don't like britney b i don't damn like her she just she's she just has something negative to say i haven't heard her say a positive thing about anybody on there I'm sorry, that's just my opinion. If I missed it, correct me. Please let me know. But she's steady. If she has said something positive, it damn sure her negative overshadows that because I have not heard her any say, say a whole lot of positive about any dog on body, right? She says she got to go get her a drink. Just then, Lyrica and A1 walk in hand in hand because, you know, of course, they're working on their marriage. Um, And y'all got to excuse me. It is hot in here. It is down. These lights, these ring lights are hot. But anyway, they said they're working on their relationship. They kind of shade Jason because, you know, they both kind of pissed off with him for him dropping this video with A1 and Summer Bunny. Now, A1 says, what did I ask you? I asked you to give me some time. And you, what happened? You went out and you, you know, went ahead and said something anyway. Now, first, Jason tries to suck up when he's in their face suck up and kiss their ass like well what can I do what do you need me to do A1 is like well you got my girl going on before somebody else my girl needs to go on last she don't open up for nobody else which boy stop so Jason Lee was like yeah whatever no problem I can put her at the end then once he gets in his green screen Jason he was like yeah I did it I said it and if it came around I would do it again like what kind of shady shit is that but he did later on come out and admit to A1 and Lyrica like fuck it yeah I did it I didn't mean to do it but I did it like it was on some shady mess but you know it is what it is but they decided to move on from that so it is what it is um Mickey Monday performs I have no damn clue what he was saying. Britney B performs and says she can sing. Bitch, where? You know, I don't want to keep saying that the negative about Britney. She's a very, very beautiful young man. That's what I'm going to say about that. Afterwards, they go outside. Uh, Mickey is out there with Slick. His family is there. His mom, his dad, his sister's there. They all sitting there talking. Here come Trisha with her little messy ass walking up. Mickey, oh my God. He hugs her. He's like, Slick, this is Trisha. Trisha, this is Slick. She's like, hi, nice to officially meet you. She's like, I, yes, I've officially met you before. No, I didn't say my name, so it wasn't official. I know Slick would have popped Molly whopped her ass. 
if those cameras weren't, if she didn't have nothing to lose, I know she would have, because she, she only 22. She still got a lot of growing in the mind to do. I know a part of her wanted to knock her head off her body, because I would have too. That's just me though. That's just my thoughts. So Lyrica performs. She has a beautiful voice, y'all. I love to hear Lyrica's voice. She has a gorgeous voice. Apple Watts sitting next to Britney B yelling from the crowd, Apple Watts. 14 sheets to win. <laughs> 14 sheets to win. She litty like a titty. You could tell Britney B was kind of in her feelings too. Because Apple was loud. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to ask my girl. Britney B was kind of in her feelings. How she get? She's a, you know, she's a beautiful young man. She's a handsome young lady. Let's just say that. Y'all, so after the showcase is over, Apple goes outside because Lyrica and her homegirl, I think it's Saya or Sia, I think it's Sia, they're already outside. And so Apple comes over drunk as hell, talking all to Lyrica, which, you know, they ain't gonna be, they ain't like cool or whatever, but she was just being loud, like extra drunk and annoying. You know how it is when you, when you sober and the person with you was drunk, they just get on your damn nerves. Britney B comes out and Britney B goes up to Lyrica, so I heard from somebody that said you had said this. On some old he say, she say crap. It was straight dumb. She had no reason to come up to her. If you ain't got no hardcore facts, don't come to me and tell me what somebody else said I said about you. Because nine times out of ten, ten, it's just as fake as they goddamn ass. So unless you done heard it out of my damn mouth, don't come back telling me nothing somebody done heard that they said that I said that you said. I don't goddamn care. I don't care. So... Soon as Lyrica tells her it's false, it's not true, she reaches out and gives her a hug. Okay, well, it's squash. That can be what it is. Bitch, because you don't have no real beef for her in the first place. It was dumb. It was stupid. I still think that she's jealous of her and she was hating on her for no reason. That's just my thoughts. That's just my opinion. So Lyrica tells her, my real issue is that you and my friend have an issue. Come on over here, Sia. Like, what's y'all's issue? Sia basically... That, they argument was dumb as hell to me too. Just because, one, I don't like to see black women arguing like this. Especially over something dumb. Like, we don't, no. Arguing over, you mad because you wanted to be her friend and I don't want to be her friend because I got these connections and you trying to use me for these connections. Just a bunch of foolery. So they went back and forth, pointing fingers in each other's faces. And I was sick of it and the episode ended and I was very happy for it. Um, like I said, this episode, it was good, but like, like that last part, it got on my nerves just because again, I don't like seeing black women arguing, especially arguing over something dumb as in you want to be her friend. No, you trying to use me for connections. Like that's, that's just dumb. I have no room for it. I have no tolerance for it. It was just dumb. It was dumb. And honestly, I wouldn't have watched the end of it had I not to do the review for this right here. I'm just saying. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the review. If you watched it, please let me know what you think about it. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think. And um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.